Okay, so in these strings, we're focusing on a great property, multiplication, where we can switch the order of the numerators to make our lives a lot easier. So I'm going to set down a couple of fractions here that I think uh, will, will lead us to that conclusion, and we'll talk about how they fit into an array, and we'll talk about, you know, what, what is this property called? What do we call this process of switching the order? And maybe, in fact, I'll start with that. So when you take a numerator and you switch it to make your life easier, when you switch the order in multiplication or addition, you're moving the numbers around, you're commuting them, so it's called the commutative. That means to commute, if you think of a person driving to work, they're going back and forth, back and forth, the commutative property. So we can move numbers around without changing the answer, and, and usually you might see this in a, a textbook as something like this. And this just means that some number a times b will give you the same thing as b times a. So if you had 2 times 3, that would equal 3 times 2. In both cases, you get 6. That's the idea of the commutative property, and it turns out it's very useful, like in these fractions. So the first thing we'll do is we'll apply a standard algorithm to each of them, and then we'll kind of backtrack to talk about oops, how we know the commutative property applies. So we have 2 times 4, which is I'll write out 2 times 4 over 4 times 5. That gives us 8 over 20. I'm going to um, leave it in that form, not reduce yet. Here we have, again, 4 times 2. And notice it was 2 by 4. Now it's 4 by 2. All we've done is change the order. And the denominators are even the same. So we know that it has to be the same answer, which is 8 out of 20. So notice we still got the same thing. Now we have 2 by 5 over 5 by 6. Right, multiplying across with those numerators, and we get 10 out of 30. And then here we get it's 5 over 5 times 2 over 6, so 5 times 2 over 5 times 6. And again, all we did was switch the order of the numerators, so I know I'll get the same thing, which is 10 over 30. Now, um, I'm going to erase this commutative property. I think I need the room. We can visualize this with an array. Um, let me use the array for um, maybe the first two, which is easier to draw. It's a 4 by 5, 4, maybe about that, 4 by 5. So I'm going to draw my four rows, 2, 3, 4, and my five columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. And that's close, sorry about that, it's a little off. Each of these should be the same uh, height and width, so we should have a bunch of squares here. I mean, obviously we won't have that, but it's a 4 by 5 array. So what we're saying here is that we have 2 by 4 on the top, so that would fill up 8 squares. Right? Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, out of the 20 squares that are available. And that means that our answer would be 8 out of 20. But here we, we switch the order, right? Instead of instead of two by four, it was four by two. So maybe we can think of instead of having a two by four, we can think of this as a two by four this way. It's the same size rectangle. In the first case we had a rectangle like this. In the second case we had one facing this way, but if you look at the size of them, they both encompass one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight individual squares which means it never matters what order you multiply the numerators in. right? Just turn, it's like turning the array or rectangle. It won't change the, change the size, just the direction. And that does not matter here. In both cases, we get 8 out of 20. The same thing here. 2 by 5 is the same thing as 5 by 2. You would just take a rectangle. First, we would form one that's 2 by 5 or 10 units, maybe like this. right? And the second case would be 5 by 2, so maybe it would be more like this, 5 by 2. Same rectangles, just turned. And that's an illustration of the commutative property. And why does this matter? Well, this is much simpler than this. And maybe not dramatically so, not yet, but it gets us started on a great path because eventually this property can save you tons of time when you're dealing with fractions. Why? Well, 4 over 4, that's just 1. It means 4 divided by 4. So really, you can only see right away when you write the numerators in this order that the answer is 2 over 5 or 8 over 20. Right? We reduce this by dividing by 
4 and divided by 4, and we get 2 over 20 in both cases. So if you took, if you notice that this numerator matches the denominator, what a great opportunity. Switch the numerators, and all of a sudden you know those will cancel out. And in fact, I mean, once you get better at this, once you see this, since you know these are eventually going to divide by each other, you just cross them out and see that the answer is right there, 2 over 5. And you'll get better at that as you go on. Same thing here. Notice 5 in the numerator matches this denominator. If I was to switch them, the numerators around, I get 5 over 5 times 2 over 6, which is just, well, that's the answer, 2 over 6. Because 5 divided by 5 is 1. And 2 over 6 is 1 third, which is exactly what we have here. So switching that order could really save you some time. And I think uh, we'll, we'll see this property keep popping up, the commutative property. It's great to work with in fractions.